The Two Cultures is the first part of an influential 1959 Reed lecture by British scientist and novelist C. P. Snow. Its thesis was that, "...the intellectual life of the whole of Western society," was split into the titular two cultures, namely the sciences and the humanities, and that this was a major hindrance to solving the world's problems. The Two Cultures and the Scientific Revolution 1959 was a published version of the lectures in book form. The lecture The talk was delivered 7 May 1959 in the Senate House, Cambridge, and subsequently published as The Two Cultures and the Scientific Revolution. The lecture and book expanded upon an article by Snow published in the New Statesman of 6 October 1956, also entitled The Two Cultures. Published in book form, Snow's lecture was widely read and discussed on both sides of the Atlantic, leading him to write a 1963 follow-up, The Two Cultures, and a second look, an expanded version of The Two Cultures and the Scientific Revolution. Snow's position can be summed up by an often repeated part of the essay. A good many times I have been present at gatherings of people who, by the standards of the traditional culture, are thought highly educated and who have with considerable gusto been expressing their incredulity at the illiteracy of scientists. Once or twice I have been provoked and have asked the company how many of them could describe the second law of thermodynamics. The response was cold, it was also negative. Yet I was asking something which is the scientific equivalent of, have you read a work of Shakespeare's? I now believe that if I had asked an even simpler question, such as, what do you mean by mass, or acceleration, which is the scientific equivalent of saying, can you read? Not more than one in ten of the highly educated would have felt that I was speaking the same language. So the great edifice of modern physics goes up, and the majority of the cleverest people in the Western world have about as much insight into it as their Neolithic ancestors would have had. In 2008, the Times Literary Supplement included The Two Cultures and the Scientific Revolution in its list of the 100 books that most influenced Western public discourse since the Second World War. Snow's Reed Lecture condemned the British educational system as having, since the Victorian era, over rewarded the humanities especially Latin and Greek at the expense of scientific and engineering education, despite such achievements having been so decisive in winning the Second World War for the Allies. This in practice deprived British elites in politics, administration, and industry of adequate preparation to manage the modern scientific world. By contrast, Snow said, German and American schools sought to prepare their citizens equally in the sciences and humanities, and better scientific teaching enabled these countries' rulers to compete more effectively in a scientific age. Later discussion of the two cultures tended to obscure Snow's initial focus on differences between British systems of both schooling and social class and those of competing countries. Topic: <laughs> Implications and influence. The literary critic F. R. Leavis called Snow a public relations man. For the scientific establishment in his essay Two Cultures, the significance of C. P. Snow, published in The Spectator. The article attracted a great deal of negative correspondence in the magazine's letters pages. In his 1963 book, Snow appeared to revise his thinking and was more optimistic about the potential of a mediating third culture. This concept was later picked up in Brockman, John, 1995, The Third Culture, Beyond the Scientific Revolution. Introducing the reprinted The Two Cultures, 1993, Stefan Collini has argued that the passage of time has done much to reduce the cultural divide Snow noticed, but has not removed it entirely. Stephen J. Gold's The Hedgehog, The Fox, and The Magister's Pox provides a different perspective. Assuming the dialectical interpretation, it argues that Snow's concept of two cultures is not only off the mark, it is a damaging and short-sighted viewpoint, and that it has perhaps led to decades of unnecessary fence-building. Simon Critchley, in Continental Philosophy, a very short introduction suggests, Snow diagnosed the loss of a common culture and the emergence of two distinct cultures, those represented by scientists on the one hand and those Snow termed literary intellectuals on the other. If the former are in favor of social reform and progress through science, technology and industry, then intellectuals are what Snow terms natural Luddites in their understanding of and sympathy for advanced industrial society. In Mill's terms, the division is between Benthamites and Coleridgeans. That is, Critchley argues that what Snow said represents a resurfacing of a discussion current in the mid-19th century. 
Critchley describes the Levis contribution to the making of a controversy as a vicious ad hominem attack, going on to describe the debate as a familiar clash in English cultural history. Citing also T. H. Huxley and Matthew Arnold, in his opening address at the Munich Security Conference in January 2014, the Estonian president Tumas Hendrik Ilves said that the current problems related to security and freedom in cyberspace are the culmination of absence of dialogue between the two cultures. Today, bereft of understanding of fundamental issues and writings in the development of liberal democracy, computer geeks devise ever better ways to track people simply because they can and it's cool. Humanists on the other hand do not understand the underlying technology and are convinced, for example, that tracking metadata means the government reads their emails. Antecedents Contrasting scientific and humanistic knowledge is a repetition of the methodenstreit of 1890 German universities. A quarrel in 1911 between Benedetto Croce and Giovanni Gentile on the one hand and Federigo Enriquez on the other one is believed to have had enduring effects in the separation of the two cultures in Italy and to the predominance of the views of objective idealism over those of logical positivism. In the social sciences it is also commonly proposed as the quarrel of positivism versus interpretivism. Topic. See also Culture war The third culture Science wars Consilience, the unity of knowledge, a 1998 book written by biologist Edward Osborne Wilson, as an attempt to bridge the gap between the two cultures. Quarrel of the Ancients and the Moderns Topic. References Topic. Further reading Burgett, Maria, and Lamb, Louis, eds. 2008. Science Matter, Humanities as Complex Systems. World Scientific, Singapore. ISBN 978-981-283-593-2. James, Frank A. J. L. The 29th of November 2016. Introduction: Some Significances of the Two Cultures Debate. PDF. Interdisciplinary Science Reviews. 41 2 3, 107 to 117. 10.1080/03080188.2016.1223651. Andrew Sinclair, The Red and the Blue: Intelligence, Treason and the Universities. Coronet Books, Hodder and Stoughton, UK, 1987. 211 pages. ISBN 0-340-41687-4. Topic. External links Bragg, Melvin, The Two Cultures Discussion, UK, BBC Radio 4. Critchley, Simon 2001, Continental Philosophy, A Very Short Introduction, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-285359-2. Nineteen Stefan Introduction. In Snow, Charles Percy, The Two Cultures, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-06520-7 Ferris, Timothy the, 13th of October 2011. the World of the Intellectual Versus. The World of the Engineer. Wired. Griffiths, Philip the, 13th of September 1995, Two Cultures Today, UK, St. Andrews. Precht, Richard David 2013. Natural Sciences and Humanities, Genesis of Two Worlds. Zacklessons web video, Google YouTube. Snow, Charles Percy, January 2013. The Two Cultures. The New Statesman. Are We Beyond the Two Cultures? Seed, the 7th of May 2009.